All right, dude. So look at this, man. We rebuilt the Atras e-bike, and um, basically same components. Uh, only thing different though is put a coil shock on it. Uh, this is actually the DNM uh, burner. Managed to get these for like forty dollars on offer up. It was uh, unused basically. So, anyways, we're here at the Fullerton Loop, and uh, we're gonna check these. Uh, and test these babies out. Let's roll. All right, dude. So we're riding here today at the Florissant Loop because, quite frankly, all the other areas, trail systems, it's like raining. Like uh, this was the only area or trail system where it didn't rain for more than three hours. It actually rained for only like an hour, and before that, it was about I don't know, about two days of no rain. So I think things should have sufficiently dried out. Oh, wow. These shocks, man. Definitely a lot more responsive. Uh, a lot better dampening, too, compared to like. Coil shocks. So as you guys can see, it is a little wet. I do have the uh, stock 550 spring on here. And I think it might be a little too soft. Oh wow, dude, way better. Way better, dude. <sighs> I can't wear my glasses, man. Got mud in my eye. Oh yeah, dude. These shocks aren't like the most expensive. But dude, they work pretty nice, man. For those of you guys also wondering about weight, with the spring and mountain hardware, they weigh about actually, they weigh like 801 grams. The spring weighs in at uh, 340 grams. So uh, there's that. Hi, oh, yeah, dude. Shocks are definitely much more responsive. Going up this way, a little bit more of a challenge. 
Oh, it's wet there. Ah, go up over here. So I think currently the 550s are a little too soft. Thinking maybe 650, um, 600 or 650, I think would be good. Um, I do have it wound it up about three full turns, which is normally like you know the maximum that you want to do on coil shocks, and it all has to do with um, stroke and all that stuff. Basically, the more preload you have, obviously the less you know. Uh, stroke you have and then it uh, you run the risk of binding up the coil which is basically like bottoming it out and that's not good either and go down this way dude oh yeah much better definitely much better dude so one thing about the shock is that I feel like it's definitely much more responsive compared to uh, you know like a an air shock uh, and the other thing is um, when you run like a mullet build right you could actually steer from the rear this is actually much more apparent um, with this uh, with this coil dude I don't know why, but I feel like I can actually like steer from the rear a little bit better, which is definitely helpful because of the fact that, you know, um, this bike is pretty slack. How's it going, man? Oh, that was harsh. Stick there, dude. There's people probably trying to sabotage it, man. Looks like a trail builders actually fix that. I took off the dropper post on this bike and uh, basically using a 27.2 seat post right now carbon fiber right put the carbon fiber gel and all that stuff and just uh, you know kind of like spacer or whatever and um, one thing that I'm feeling for sure is that the uh, seat actually slides down so I'm sitting down on it and I take a, you know, sufficiently uh, decent bump. Way, way better. Wow. We'll just go down to this route because normally go up to the top after some rains and stuff.
I got shit in my eye, dude. Eyes are tearing up, man. I got something in it. This is not good, dude. Yeah, dude. So here's what ended up happening, man. As you guys can see, it sits like this, right? <clears throat> or something like that. Yeah, right there. And it basically snapped. Yeah. Ah, well. Live and you learn, right? All right, dude. So pretty much got it back on looks like everything's pretty much intact there's no damage to these spokes from what i'm seeing which is good um however there's too much chain so we got to do something about that when we get home i think what i'm going to do is probably switch it up to larger cassettes um or larger cogs so that there's less chain slack you know like that if it could reach at least and then go from there uh but yeah let's actually do that now and then let's take it back up this little hill because i do love this downhill here <laughs> okay so we're back here dude uh got it running but i can't shift down into smaller cogs and i can't shift up either because obviously uh i've hit the limit on my b screw so we're gonna hobble it home like this dude Alright guys, so made it back to the car dude, but um, before we pack up the car or the bike and get ready to go home, I do want to say man, just some final thoughts on these DNM burners. Uh, for the $40 that I paid for them, you know, used, uh, they are pretty badass. I gotta admit, they are definitely much more responsive, better dampening. Um, I'm thinking it's because it's a piggyback system and overall, dude, I'm a believer in a coil shocks now um they are a little too light though uh with the 550 pound spring so i think maybe 650 is probably going to be good um i've heard that basically the fox springs work on these so um i'm gonna check out the market and see uh, what i could find but uh other than that dude i did promise you guys some um drop tests so uh here it is <laughs> 